In October of last year, Tom Parker, one-fifth of boy band The Wanted, announced the devastating news that he'd been diagnosed with a brain tumour. Well, this week marks a year since his diagnosis and in a new documentary for Stand Up To Cancer, Tom invites cameras into his life to help raise awareness of his condition. Mm. Well, Tom and his wife Kelsey join us now and it's lovely to see lovely you. Lovely to Thank see you. Thank you for coming. Good morning. Um, what made you decide that you were going to go so public? <sighs> It's hard to say until you're in that position. Yeah, I think for us and for Tom, I think he needed the support from people, but also just to raise awareness. Because mm. when we was in the situation and we got hit with the diagnosis, it was like, wow, what can, what can we do? What are the steps? How do we move forward with this? And it's just radio and chemo, that's it. So we needed... There's, you know, they get one, it gets 1% of funding, brain tumours. Which is just clearly not enough. <laughs> and it's, it's so brutal because it all seemed to happen so quickly. It's sort of last October, you were in Norfolk, you were up there as a family, and you started to feel a little bit different. Well, something had happened a couple of weeks before, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. I don't know what, but I just remember coming around. Yeah. And I had a big mark on my head here. I had a, didn't know where it was from. So we think he had a seizure before, but obviously yeah. I wasn't there, I didn't know. Yeah. See. But, again, I, don't, I thought Tom uh, was suffering with anxiety, depression, we were expecting a baby, was it the pressures of, you know, having a new baby? Mm. So we just didn't know. But Tom was really good because every sign and symptom he had, he took himself to the hospital. I and knew there was something wrong. He, he yeah. said to them, there's something wrong with me. And yeah. they were like, no, you're fine. He had a COVID test, not COVID. He went back and said, there's something wrong with me. And they booked him in for an MRI. Turns out. Thank God. Now, the the worst news possible. That with, yeah. with COVID, you had, to, you had to go in there on your own. Yeah. And you had to get that diagnosis on your own. They literally pulled the curtain around with four other people on the ward. Didn't know, and then it was like, You've got a brain tumour. That was in Norfolk. Just on my own. And you were outside, weren't no, you? No, he rang me. I was on the way to see him. I yeah. hadn't seen him in days. And then he rang me and said, Kelsey, I think I've got a brain tumour. I was, what? Like, obviously, we did not think that. They were saying to me that it could be a bleed on the brain. Yeah. And so when you receive that diagnosis, I mean, what, what goes through... What, I mean, what did they say to you about the future? What did they well, tell you? Well, to be honest, I, I said to him, I don't really want a prognosis. Yeah. Cos, for me, it was just... Uh, you know, I know, I know what the statistics are of this disease, but I just didn't want to hear it. And also, we're positive vibes. Positive vibes yeah. only. So I was like, we're not getting a prognosis. No one can tell you how long you've got left. Let's just, like, let's get on with it. Well, they gave let's... us 12 months at that point, and I was like, yeah. we're let's... way past it. Yeah, let's, let's fight this. Let's go for yeah. it. Yeah. And so what is the treatment? Because I would imagine that it's been a bit severe. It's been pretty full on, yeah. So the chemo was very, very tough. Radio was... Radio was probably the hardest part. Yeah, but you don't even get time to think. We went in on the Monday and I was obviously pregnant, so they didn't want really me in the hospital. They took us in and then it was like, um, you've got this and you get fitted for your mask on Wednesday and then Thursday you'll start radio. Wow. And it was six weeks of radio back to back. He Every had weekends day. off and it was chemo In as a well, way, that's dual. probably a good thing that it happens so fast. Yeah, you haven't got time to think. Yeah. You're like, right, let's do Straight it. Straight into it. Yeah. And, and as we just saw there from the clip from the documentary, it's shrunk you are stable at the moment and yep. i guess right now that is the hope that you hold on to yeah right? long may that continue yeah exactly that. yeah um yeah because obviously now we get to do our like the medication that we do we get an extra week now whereas we usually do it in two weeks every two weeks mm -hmm. yeah. we've now been able to push that back to three weeks now because oh, we're responding so well so yeah, yeah positive you've met and you say you went public because the support was great. Obviously, you want to raise awareness because 1% is not enough. Um, but you've met some amazing people uh, whilst you were making the documentary. Um, and uh, I think there's a guy called David Bolton. Wow, yeah. Them, yeah, he's, Dave, he's been amazing. We love yeah. Dave. Yeah, Dave is like seven years, seven, eight years down the line. So yeah. we wanted to reach out for me. I just read survivor stories all the time. Mm. I needed the positivity. So I came across Dave and I was like, Dave, will you talk to Tom? because Tom needs to speak to someone about this. So, yeah, we've, like, become really good friends with Dave. He's, he's on the guy. documentary. And, yeah, he's a motivational speaker as well, so he's yeah. brilliant. What do you get from him? Here he is, <laughs> my <laughs> Tom, what do you get from him? Um, do you know what? He just... He gives you that encouragement to fight on. Yeah. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because, like, it's so easy to be able to crumble under this situation, mm. especially with the, the chemotherapy and the radio. It's just mentally draining as well, going up to guys every day. And he would, uh, you'd ask Dave, oh, how did you feel when you were doing this? At least you're, you can speak to someone. Because, obviously, if you're saying it to me, I'm like, 
I, that you I don't, don't know, know what how you're meant to feel, yeah. You're not so you on your own. you can speak to someone else and say, yeah, that's how I felt. Um, within the documentary, we see you organising the, the Stand Up uh, to Cancer gig, and this is when you were reunited with the boys. Yeah. And is it, was it the first time in seven years that you'd got up and performed together, the, the Wanted were back? Yeah. What was that like? It's pretty surreal, actually. It was, um, it was pretty special. Yeah. The fact that, you know, we were together again, but just for the most beautiful reason. Yeah. You know, and that's to raise, raise awareness, awareness yeah. you know, that was... They didn't, they, you know, the boys didn't need to do that. But they were, you know, the first thing they said was, we would love to do it. So many people have been amazing, though. So many people have, like, said, what can we do to help? Yeah. yeah. And to raise awareness. Well, you've also, you, um, we know that Baroness Tessa Jowell died of uh, brain cancer in May 2018. She passionately spoke in the House of Lords for more available treatment on the NHS. You spoke to her daughter, didn't you? And yeah. Has, has it moved forward since she made those impassioned no. speeches? Not changed at all, which is sad. The standard of care hasn't been changed for 30 years. So for us, obviously, when we did get the diagnosis, it was like, How when they just said her? radio and chemo, I was like, and? And, yeah. and they're yeah. like, no, 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 it's just radio and chemo. OK. And then we were like, what else can we do? But we're fortunate we can do other stuff. Other people can't. There needs to be more. There needs to be more in the NHS. Yeah, yeah there does. So you can do you can do things privately. Yes. You can do things privately. Yeah. So so depending on how much money you've got depends on Just, is the a, level is of a sad scenario, you've got yeah. options for. That's why obviously people feel like they have to go out and fundraise. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Obviously there is private treatment out there that can be brought into the NHS. There's just not enough money for it at the moment. So funding and, and raising awareness is so important. And I know at yeah. some point you're talking about the foundation because this is what you're doing, this is your, your mission now, to, to help as much as you possibly can. Yeah. yeah. How do you feel now, sitting here? How's today? I wouldn't have been able to do this five months ago, let's put it that way. Yeah. So I feel a lot more confident and just a lot more in control of my emotions. Because yeah. if, if, if we had like, if we had done this a month ago, Five months ago. Five months ago, so yeah, I would have been a uh, crying mess, to be honest. Really? And you just felt weak. You felt yeah. weak five yes. months ago. Yeah. You, you feel loads better now, don't you? Yeah. You're feeling positive now? Very positive. Feeling positive. We're always positive vibes. Yeah. Positive <laughs> vibes only. <laughs> and you've got the baby as well. Congratulations yeah. on the baby. Well. I mean, he's going to yeah. be a year. I know, it's just gone so mad. quick. I'm thinking about having another one. Look, really? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, really don't it. tell anyone. <laughs> Everyone! <laughs> oh, secret safe with us. Uh, uh, guys, great thank, you. You. thank uh, you. Inside My Head is Sunday you. at 9 on Channel 4. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank, thank you. you.